What's up YouTube? Daniel Carter at Afro Herb Keeper here. Uh, I have a lot of big projects and big videos in the works right now, and yes, that does include a brand new reptile room tour. However, none of them are quite ready at the moment, and I didn't want to leave you guys without a Saturday morning upload, so today we are talking about some very interesting frogs. My life is a bit of a mess, but I like it that way. Between juggling school, work, dozens of animals, and a constant drive to explore, things can get pretty hectic. But one thing always stays the same. A burning passion for wildlife and a desire to preserve the biodiversity of our world through public education, conservation, and animal care. My name is Daniel Carter, and you're watching Afro Herb Keeper. Now, if you've followed my channel for a long time and you've seen my past reptile room tours, you may recognize this big girl right here. Now, this is an adult female African clawed frog, and her name is Froggy. Now, the name may or may not be a dead giveaway, but believe it or not, Froggy here has been under my care longer than any other animal I currently own. I got her over a decade ago through a mail order tadpole kit called Grow a Frog. Although as a kid, I certainly was not as meticulous and caring with my pets as I am now, thankfully this particular species of frog is about as hard to take care of as a pet rock. This is easily the hardiest species in my reptile room. In the wild and in captivity, they can tolerate some pretty miserable water quality conditions. There was a point in my life where I did not take proper care of her, and I let her water stagnate. She didn't have a filter, she didn't have anything like that. Uh, but thankfully, that point is long gone, and to this day, as you can see, she remains very healthy and very large. A truly stunning example of a very interesting looking frog. Now, if you're not familiar with this kind of frog, you might wonder, why is there no land? Um, well, this is a fully aquatic species of frog, as the name gives away they are from Africa. As you're seeing right now, they have three very cool little matte black claws on each hind leg. I haven't actually done any research as to what those claws are for, but they're very interesting. Most frogs, if you think about it, definitely do not have claws. They've got little sticky pads on the end of their toes. And so Froggy here, though she looks a little bit like a balloon, is a very unique and interesting species of amphibian. As I reintroduce Froggy today, who has just come back from Lago Vista Elementary School, where she spent the year as a class pet, I am also introducing for the very first time a brand new addition to Afro Herp Keeper's amphibian collection. He's not in frame right this second, but I will be including a shot of him, I'm sure you're seeing it right now. Um, this is an adult male African clawed frog. As you can see, he's much smaller than the female. This species of frog is sexually dimorphic, meaning that the males and females have a very obvious visible difference between them. The males are about half the size of the females because the females need that extra space to store their eggs as they develop. And as you can see, Froggy here is not lacking in terms of body mass. So this new adult male African clawed frog did not come from the elementary school, but it did come from a very similar source. This little dude actually belonged to my amazing kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Irwin. She's had him for about four or five years, but she and her dogs are moving all the way up to Alaska, and she didn't think that long distance trip would be very good for him. So now, Froggy has a new friend. Consequentially, his name is also Froggy. So we now have Froggy and Froggy. If you want to differentiate between the two of them, I've been thinking about calling the male Kermit instead. Very original name, I know. Now thankfully, as you might have been able to guess by the thumbnail, Froggy and Froggy are getting along just fine. Frogs and toads, as a general rule, are not very discreet about their mating habits. As it so happens, as soon as I introduced Froggy to Froggy, love was in the air. If you have younger viewers at home, don't avert their eyes, these are two frogs. It's really nothing that taboo. Um, what you're seeing right now is called amplexus. It's the frog mating process. And it looks pretty goofy. What's happening here is that the smaller male is grabbing the female around her midsection and holding on, just clinging to her, for dear life. I can't actually tell you if they really mated, or if this means tadpoles, or if they were just having a good time. 
But what I can tell you is that these two frogs are getting along just fine keeping each other company, and I'm very glad to have this species back in my reptile room. Before I leave them alone, I want to talk really briefly about their care. As I mentioned, these guys are about as hard to keep alive as a potted plant, but by no means does that mean that they deserve to be neglected. There are a few things that are important when you're taking care of one of these frogs. They're in a very simple setup. It's a 10 gallon tank, it's filled up a little more than halfway, so I would say there's about 5 or 6 gallons of water in there. They've got a lovely fake log and some plastic plants to hide amongst, and they seem to be doing pretty well with this arrangement. This species of frog really doesn't need any substrate. In fact, uh, many people find it best to keep them in a tank with a bare bottom, no substrate at all. But for decorative purposes, I am using your standard aquarium gravel. I think it looks really pretty in here. I've got it in my guppy and crayfish setup down here below. And although there is a small risk that they could eat the gravel and become impacted, their primary diet is going to be floating on the surface of the water, and they are smart enough to spit rocks back out. Uh, unless they're physically unable, they are going to regurgitate anything that they accidentally pick up. They also have a pretty standard Tetra Whisper filter. It takes this kind of filter cartridges and it is rated for 10 gallon tanks. It should be just fine for two frogs. But I'm pretty sure the OG froggy here is uh, pretty hungry, so we are going to be feeding her some of these Reptamin floating food sticks. Although there is a picture of a turtle on the can, I have been feeding this particular frog this particular food for 10 years, and she is in perfect health. She does get treats, she gets live insects every now and then, and she also gets frozen bloodworms. But this is her primary diet, and she does great on it. Quite literally, all we're going to do is take some of these sticks, we're going to break them in half so it's easier for her to eat, and we're just going to dump these right in. She's definitely getting more active. She smells the food. She understands that it's there, but it might take her a minute to find it. Now, even though I have cared for this species for over a decade, um, they still haven't lost their wonder. This is a very alien-looking frog. It's kind of bizarre that it never leaves the water, that it is perfectly adapted to the lifestyle that it has, which is living in streams, rivers, mud puddles, in the wilds of Africa. I think she may be starting to notice her food. It is. Yes, there she goes. Check that out. Here's our male coming up to the front as well. This species of frog, they've got a pretty entertaining method of eating. Um, they'll go up and find their food, and then they will stuff it into their mouths. It looks almost like they're clapping their hands. And as I was about to say, you can see she's got these little markings along her side that look almost like stitches. Those are actually sensory receptors that help her sense the environment around her. Uh, this species of frog is very attuned to the various ripples and splashes that happen in their native environment, which is why sometimes filters can actually be a bad idea for them. If you have too much water flow going on, it can stress them out and cause them to not be able to find their food. However, these two seem to be doing just fine with this amount of filtration. So in conclusion, pretty cool frogs. I can't tell you if this means that I'm going to have tadpoles from them in any time in the future. I just thought that was funny enough to make a video about. So, as always, I'm Daniel Carter at Afro Herb Keeper. Thank you all very much for watching. If you have any questions about these frogs or any other animals, any of my content, feel free to ask in the comment section below. I always try to get back to as many as I can. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit the thumbs up button. And if you're not already and you'd like to see more reptile and amphibian related content in the future, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. If you're already subscribed and you want to get notified when I upload a new video, hit the little bell icon. I'm going to leave these guys alone now and let them do their thing, but thanks again for watching, and have a good one.